Connor Bedard produces another highlight reel moment, but the Blackhawks still wind up falling to McDavid and the Oilers. On today's episode, I'll dive into the 4-1 to loss up in Edmonton, as well as a pair of young defensemen stepping up in Seth Jones' absence, and I'll also discuss what the Hawks should do next with struggling young forward Lucas Reichel. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into another episode of Locked On Blackhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can go and give me a quick follow on X at Jack Bushman 2, or you can go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And also, just a quick reminder that if you like what you're watching today or what you're hearing, then please make sure to go and show some support by smashing the like button, commenting down below, and of course, subscribing to the Lockdown Blackhawks YouTube channel. All that good stuff really does help drive the YouTube and Google algorithm in my direction and won't cost you anything. It only takes two seconds. And that way you can also get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. In today's episode of Lockdown Blackhawks is sponsored by Game Time. Make sure to go and download the Game Time app right now. And when you do, <clears throat> use the promo code Lockdown NHL in all caps. And that way you can get $20 off to sporting events, concerts, or theater events near you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Again, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one stop shop for all things. Chicago Blackhawks. Getting right into it, last night, obviously, we got the first look at Connor Bedard and Connor McDavid going head to head with one another in the NHL. Two players that have uh, been given that rare generational talent player tag over the last decade. So, quite the exciting matchup, of course, and such an exciting matchup, might I add, that ESPN made sure they were on their A game with high quality audio right from the get go. I mean, what are you doing, ESPN? Shame on you. And one of the biggest matchups early on in the season that true NHL fans want to tune into Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid facing off with one another. The audio is terrible in the first period. Fortunately, they did a uh, figure it out to start the second, I guess, better late than never. But uh, all jokes aside, this was a rather entertaining affair between these two teams, at least in the early going. And as a fan of the Blackhawks with how things have been going all season long, I mean, that's really all we can ask for, right? It's not wins or losses. It's just to at least make the games watchable. And this one, you know, was pretty entertaining, certainly got off to an entertaining start. And even as the game wore on, yes, the Oilers started to pull away. That shouldn't be surprising to anyone, though. They were uh, minus 520 favorites entering this one. But given the situation the Blackhawks found themselves in defensively, I thought it was a, a pretty sharp performance, all things considered, because during the morning skate, we found out that defenseman Seth Jones did not make the trip with the team up to Edmonton and is currently still back in Chicago getting evaluated for a shoulder injury. And Kevin Korchinski also still isn't with the team due to a family matter. And Jared Tenorti was placed on injured reserve a couple of days ago while still being in concussion protocol. So this kind of meant worst case scenario for the Blackhawks defensively. And they had a role with a decor of Connor Murphy, Alex Vlasic, Nikita Zaitsev, Isaac Phillips, Philip Ruse, and Louis Crevier last night against a red hot Edmonton Oilers offense that had won seven games in a row. So it was going to be a pretty tall task for this Blackhawks defense to even try to slow down Connor McDavid and the Oilers offense. Uh, four of those defensemen that I just mentioned were playing in the Calder Cup playoffs for the Rockford Ice Hogs last spring. So um, considering that that's who the Blackhawks had to ice with their decor, I thought they did a decent job, all things considered, of at least trying to make life difficult for Connor McDavid. I mean, he, he's still going to get his. There's nothing you can really do about it, but just don't give him anything easy. At least make him work for his scoring opportunities out there. And I thought the Blackhawks did that to the best of their ability last night. So 
they can at least hang their hat on that. But I got to talk about what a rock and start this game got off to. Got to mention Connor Bedard's highlight reel goal to put the Blackhawks ahead one to nothing early. And this was just a great little snippet, Blackhawks fans, of why this kid is different from every other prospect in the NHL and already most NHL players at just 18 years of age because he perfectly receives that pass uh, entering the offensive zone with speed from Alex Vlasic. That way he could get past Evan Bouchard and then makes just a gorgeous, gorgeous play by sliding the puck over to the right under the stick of defenseman Matthias Janmark, who's known for being one of the better defensive defensemen in the entire NHL. That changes the angle real quick and then puts just a shot perfectly over the glove of the Edmonton netminder. And the thing that probably blew my mind and most fans' minds the most was just how much velocity he got a shot of that, like how hard he shot that puck with that quick of a snapshot was absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I don't genuinely understand how he's able to get that much torque on his stick with that quick of a snapshot to generate uh, that that ridiculous of a release. But, oh, my goodness, Blackhawks fans, a perfect example of what makes this kid so special. The release is just like nothing we've ever seen before. And to get the velocity and to have that pinpoint accuracy all while doing it around, like I mentioned, a very solid veteran defenseman, defenseman, and Matthias Ekholm, I mean, mwah. it was an absolute thing of beauty for Connor Bedard, his 12th goal of the season also extended his point streak on the road to 10 games. That now gives him 24 points in his first 28 NHL games. Uh, probably his best highlight in the NHL thus far. Um, makes, you know, the, the losing effort a little bit of an easier pill to swallow and makes all the losing the Blackhawks have gone through and are going to go through the rest of the way. Let's not kid ourselves here, Blackhawks fans. There's going to be a lot more losses. But moments like these from Connor Bedard, these little snippets of what he's already able to do, at least makes these losses a little bit less painful, knowing that it, it just feels like Connor Bedard is inevitable. One day he is going to be absolutely unbelievable. He's unbelievable right now, already at 18. Imagine what he's going to be in three, four, five years down the road. It really feels inevitable that he's going to become one of the best if not the best players in the NHL, based on what we've seen already. Another unbelievable moment last night in the 4-1 loss to Edmonton. It is going to be very fun to watch this kid develop into whatever he is going to be over these next few years, Blackhawks fans. Unfortunately, though, that was about uh, it for the Blackhawks offense on the night. They had 14 shots on goal in the first period, got off to a really good start, but then the rest of the way, Edmonton started to get more and more momentum and they limited the Blackhawks to only nine shots on goal in the final 40 minutes of action. But two other bright spots that I do want to bring up real quick to transitioning into segment two were two young defensemen who really stepped up, I thought, in the absence of Seth Jones. And that was Alex Vlasic and Isaac Phillips. Those two, in my opinion, um, were had two of their better games of the season. And for Alex Vlasic, it's kind of been like this all year long, but I think he really shined being the number one defenseman last night for the Blackhawks as a rookie. I mean, led them with 24 minutes and 58 seconds of time on ice. That's a career high. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't just because, I mean, yeah, obviously Seth Jones and Korchinski being out aided in Vlasic being kind of utilized as the number one defenseman last night, but it wasn't just that it's because of how sturdy his play has been all year long. It was just kind of broadcasted, I think, a little bit bigger since he almost played half the game. But the way he was able to break up plays, that's been the case all season long, too. Just that long reach of his paired with some excellent recognition in the defensive zone. He's an absolute nightmare already at a young age. I'm very excited about Alex Vlasic, and <clears throat> I imagine the Blackhawks are very excited about what he's already developed into as well. And then Isaac Phillips, man, that... This is what I, I thought he was doing before he got reassigned to Rockford was just growing and growing and getting more and more confident in himself. And one thing the broadcast kept mentioning last night, I don't know if it was Buchagross or, or whoever it was for ESPN, but they kept mentioning how aggressive Isaac Phillips was. And I love to see that because that means he's not hesitant. He's not in between in terms of his decisions. 
he was out there knowing what he had to do and executing with full recognition and full confidence that he can go out there and disrupt plays. And he did it perfectly last night. And that's why I think you got to leave him in the NHL. I just don't know what more he has to prove down in Rockford. This guy's ready to be an everyday NHL defenseman. And I thought last night was plenty of proof that he should be sticking around moving forward. He was excellent in the absence of Kevin Korchinski and Seth Jones, along with Alex Vlasic. And I also need to give credit to Connor Murphy as well. Not a young defenseman, but I still, one of my keys to victory going into the game yesterday was that the veteran defenseman had to play like veteran defensemen. And I mentioned that before, even knowing Seth Jones was out of the lineup. So it mattered even more. And I know the final result, it is what it is. Connor Murphy had one of his better games of the season, I thought. Six hits, two block shots, was plus one in uh, 22 minutes and 45 seconds of time on ice. One of his better outings all year long, wasn't on the ice for any goals against, and really played like a veteran last night. So hopefully that's something that Murphy can build off of because the Blackhawks just need him to be better than what he's been this season. And I mentioned this on a couple, uh, a show a couple of days ago, but him and Zaitsev, I think, have been the Blackhawks' two worst defensemen this season. And that's considering Kevin Korchinski and even Isaac Phillips and maybe Wyatt Kaiser as well. Connor Murphy probably didn't struggle as much as Kaiser did, if I'm being honest. But to even be in that conversation as a veteran, it's pretty unfortunate. So nice to see him. Uh, get back on his game tomorrow, and hopefully that can kind of kickstart a good streak for him moving forward. All right, there are my thoughts from last night's loss in the Connor Bowl or whatever you want to call it. Coming up in just a moment here, Blackhawks fans, I do want to discuss whether the Edmonton Oilers have what it takes to make a run to the Stanley Cup this season. But first, I got to talk to you all about game time. Game time is my favorite app because you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets or be stressed when you're going to your next big event and game time is always the fast and easy way for you to purchase tickets, whether you're going to a sporting event, you're going to see a concert, comedy, a theater event, something along those lines. Game time is always the best place to check out. And I personally have used game time since I was back in high school when I was wanting to go watch uh, Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane play at the United center. I've always used game time to go to Blackhawks games. I also just use game time about a month ago to go to a concert out in Vegas. I always love how they send me uh, pictures from every seat in the venue so I know exactly what I'm getting and know what to expect upon arrival. I highly recommend you all go and download the Game Time app right now. And when you do, make sure to use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps for $20 off with your first purchase. Again, you can get $20 off to come and see Connor Bedard play at the United Center this season. All you have to do is download the Game Time app and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed game time. All right, segment two. One thing I do want to start doing a little bit more on the show is talking about what's going on around the rest of the NHL. Since we're now about 30 games into the season, we're getting a little bit better of an understanding of where everyone's at, what teams look like they're going to be able to accomplish what this year. We just have a little bit better knowledge of where everyone's at at this point. And also be sure to uh, check out tomorrow's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Be on the lookout because I'm going to be discussing the Central Division as we're nearly 30 games into the season, like I mentioned. And I'm also going to be discussing the St. Louis Blues firing head coach Craig Berube last night. Make sure to uh, be on the lookout for that episode dropping tomorrow. But what I want to dive into on today's show real quick is kind of the debate that's hovering around the Edmonton Oilers and the question that's kind of lingered over their heads for years now. And it's whether or not they have enough around Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to go and win the Stanley Cup. We know what type of special talents those two are, arguably the two best players in the entire NHL, but the playoff success has kind of eluded them as a team thus far. And every year it feels like it's kind of a puzzle for the Oilers front office to try to piece together a good enough team around those two to go and win it all. And given that they've kind of righted the ship here recently, they've now won eight games in a row and are above 500 for the first time this season. And when you go and take a look at the Pacific division, it's really a top, top four, bottom four kind of situation with, uh, Seattle, 
Calgary, Anaheim, and San Jose all kind of being dreadful. And even with the Central Division kind of being top heavy this year as well between um, Colorado, Winnipeg, and Dallas. I know Arizona is randomly having a late charge, but I don't want to get ahead of myself by saying this, but it, it feels like the Oilers are now in a good spot to be on track to make the Stanley Cup playoffs once again. But the question is, are they good enough to go and win it all? And when diving into this Ed Edmonton Oilers team, the forward group, I think, has never really been the issue. And looking at this group in particular, yeah, I think they're absolutely talented enough up front to go in and win it all. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl with a good supporting cast of Zach Hyman, who I think meshes really well with the skill sets that the other two provide, right? A really good power forward, net front presence, really good guy on the power play as those two kind of play with the puck between the dots. He's the man in the middle. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, I think, has always been a kind of underappreciated second line player. Yeah, he might not be the number one pick they were hoping for, but he's still a very dynamic weapon. And then say what you want about Evander Kane. He's still a very effective power forward as well. I do think that maybe they could add one more veteran forward in their bottom six, but still Matthias Yanmark, uh, Sam Gagne, McLeod, uh, Warren Fogle, I thought was a good physical get as well. Um, Adam Ernie, guys like that. I, I think it is still a, a deep enough forward group that they could be confident in those uh, 12 or 13 guys heading into the Stanley cup playoffs, but that's never what the question has been about with the Edmonton Oilers. It's always been about whether or not the decor and the goaltending is going to be good enough to get them to the Stanley cup or to get them over that hurdle in the playoffs. And when you just go and look at this decor on paper, I mean, listen, I, I think Matias Ekholm was a necessary get for them. They had to, kind of realize that uh, with Adam Larson not coming back and, uh, oh my gosh, who am I forgetting? Oh man, really? Maybe it wasn't Larson. Effective defensive defenseman that was on IR for them for way too long. I can't think of his Oscar Clefbaum. That's who I'm thinking of. I wasn't thinking of Adam Larson. Oscar Clefbaum. They needed someone to kind of step into that role because Darnell Nurse, it, it just never feels like he's going to be a good enough number one defenseman for them to get where they want to be. Um, it's nice that Evan Bouchard has really blossomed in the last year and is having a monster start to his season. And that's a huge addition to the power play as well. But defensively, I still have questions about the Oilers in their own end in a seven game series against another playoff caliber team, right? Like Cody CC, Brett Kulak, DeHarnay, uh, Gleason, even Darnell Nurse. Like, <clears throat> It's just tough to, to think those guys are reliable enough in their own end to get the job done. And then there's the debate about Stuart Skinner as well. I mean, it's been a very polarizing year for him. The first half was absolutely dreadful and, you know, probably led to their coach being fired. And now all of a sudden he's standing on top of his head on a nightly basis during this winning streak, goals against average below two during that span. Um, can he be that level of a player, of a netminder, when it matters the most, I don't know. And to me, it just really feels like the Oilers need one more veteran defensive defenseman presence to go and sure things up back there. The problem is in today's salary cap world, the Oilers have like $61,000 of cap availability. I'm pretty sure. I know it's less than 500,000. They do not have a lot of money to go and get that ad. So they'd have to give up someone or make some sort of roster transaction to have any hopes of taking on uh, a defenseman of that caliber that I think they need. So for those reasons, man, I just really think it's hard to picture this Edmonton Oilers team with what they have right now on defense as a Stanley Cup winner. I, I think if they can convince McDavid and Dreisaitl to stick around with the salary cap expected to go up next season, I think they can go and get the piece on the back end that they truly need to help them switch those gears. But until then, I just... Can't say I'm confident in the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So for those reasons, I'm not saying it's impossible. Anything can happen. That's what makes hockey so beautiful. Anyone can get hot at the right time of the year. I just have a hard time picturing it being the Edmonton Oilers with this defense and with this goaltending combo. And it feels like it's the same story for them year after year. All right, coming up in just a moment, don't go anywhere, Blackhawks fans, because I'm not done with the Blackhawks talk on today's show. I am going to discuss 
what the Hawks should do next with young forward Lucas Reichel. But first, I need to talk to you all about Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Connor Bedard could be scoring 40 goals during his rookie season and could be looking at the Calder Trophy in his near future. And you could be winning real big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports because you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy contests. And all you have to do is pick whether studs like Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, or Connor Bedard will record more or less than their sleeper projections for goals, assists, points, plus, minus, or more on any given game. And again, sleeper offers you the chance to win 100 times your cash. So start paying attention, make the right picks, and you could win real big. And right now, you can go and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps, and you'll get up to an $100 match on your first deposit with Sleeper. Again, that's an $100 match when you use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps with Sleeper, and you can go and see Sleeper's terms of use right now for more details. All right, back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, if you're still tuned into this point of today's show, first and foremost, let me just say thank you very much. I really do appreciate all of your support. And if you haven't done so already, please help your boy out by smashing the like button and subscribing to the Lockdown Blackhawks YouTube channel. And also make sure to go and check out the new Lockdown Sports Today. Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube and lockdown sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of lockdown plus our national shows covering every league go to lockdown sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. All right, segment three, before I wrap things up today, Blackhawks fans, Feels like we've kind of reached a boiling point because in last night's game, Lucas Reichel played a team low 10 minutes and 14 seconds of time on ice. Not only did he fail to record a point once again, but he also failed to record even a shot on goal. And he now has no points in just three shots in five games worth of action since being healthy scratched against the Minnesota Wild. All five of those games, might I add, have been while he's been playing down on the Blackhawks' fourth line. And Coach Luke Richardson mentioned after the game that, you know, these are just kind of the ups and downs that young players are going to go through and um, that they're going to support Lucas Reichel fully through these ups and downs and through these struggles and that they're here for him. And he just feels like he's kind of down on himself right now. And when I hear that, man, it's it's really tough to hear. But at the same point in time, I, I appreciate Luke Richardson's support and I appreciate the kind words, but let's not act like Lucas Reichel being down on the fourth line isn't leading to that. And I know the struggles have been going for him all year long. It's been a very tough campaign, no doubt about it. But in the last five games, Lucas Reichel hasn't played more than 12 minutes and 30 seconds of time on ice. And he's down there with grinders, guys who aren't playmakers, who aren't going to help him develop the parts of his game. Yes, I know he needs to get more physical. I don't know if he's going to learn that and you're going to see the results on the fly by playing him on the fourth line. I think those are more of things that he needs to work on in the off season. And it's just going to be hard for him to learn those things here real quick. These things kind of take time adapting to the physicality of the NHL, being able to keep the puck on your stick and be sturdy on your skates. Those things, they don't just happen in the flip of a switch. So to me, I think it's pretty clear Blackhawks fans. I think we'd all agree that this project of Lucas Reichel down on the fourth line, it has to stop right here, right now, because it's not helping him. It's not helping this Blackhawks team. And I don't really know what we're trying to accomplish at this point in time. But with that being said, Feels like something has to give because all season long, it's been underwhelming Lucas Reichel. That's been one of the biggest storylines. And after seeing what he was able to accomplish last year and after how good he looked in training camp in the preseason, I mean, we had these expectations for Lucas Reichel, not just ridiculously because of a you know 17 game stretch that he had last year. And in hindsight, that might not have been big enough to kind of feel confident enough in, but he followed that up with a really good summer and 
looked like he was seriously on the level of Connor Bedard, like he could make that same impact that Bedard has thus far. And that just hasn't been the case. And it feels like we've come to a choice where something come to a place where something has to give with Lucas Reichel and Blackhawks fans. I, I really think there's only three options here because keeping him on the fourth line, I don't think that's the answer and healthy scratching him. I, I don't think is the answer either. I don't know. The message has been sent. I mean, healthy scratching him. I, I don't think that's going to have him learning anything further. So to me, there's only three options left for Lucas Reichel. Number one, is sending him down to Rockford. And from what I've seen on social media, this seems like what the fans want the Blackhawks to do with Reichel. I will say, sending him back down to Rockford, it is going to be very tough because it, it really felt like that the vibes around Reichel and training camp was, uh, those that door is closed. Like, he was ready to be a full-time NHLer. And it, it really felt like there was kind of just that mentality around him, like it, like that wasn't even an option almost at that point in time. Like he had kind of surpassed that prospect phase and he was ready to go and be an everyday NHL or that felt like a surefire thing all off season long. So to go and send him down to Rockford now, after that, you got to wonder how he's going to handle it, especially as a kid who's already down on himself. I would say if they want to send him to Rockford, I think he's got to have a very long and heartfelt talk with both Kyle Davidson and Luke Richardson, because the last thing we want is a discouraged Lucas Reichel. Who's not going, who's going back to Rockford with the wrong thoughts in his mind. And we, we won't want him going down there and letting his struggles further continue. And then he really goes to a dark place. You got to be wary of these things when you're dealing with a young kid who's only 21 years of age still, which is why I don't think we should get ahead of ourselves and call him a bust or anything. Still very young in the development process but that is option number one, and quite honestly, it feels like we're, I'm getting the same feeling I had with Reichel that I had about Wyatt Kaiser before the Blackhawks inevitably sent him down as well. I'm kind of feeling the same thing. Second option for the Blackhawks is Luke Richardson can go and give him one last opportunity with Connor Bedard and Philip Kurashev on the Blackhawks' top line and see how that goes for a few games and then kind of reassess and make a decision there. I think he deserves that opportunity. I know he hasn't been good in the bottom six, but I don't really know how you can expect him to be good in the bottom six. Again, I brought this up the last couple of shows, but it feels like a Dylan Strom situation. That's just not a spot where Lucas Reichel is going to have success in. So if you don't want to send him down to Rockford, I think you absolutely have to put him back on the top line and see how things go there. And then part three is kind of, a, or option three, I guess I should say, it's kind of a subplot to that. Wait until Andreas Athanasiu gets back. I, we haven't had any updates on him in the last couple of days. I know uh, the plan was for him to start skating soon. If by chance he's able to return, shoot, maybe when the Blackhawks return home after uh, their game against Seattle, I believe they're back home against Vancouver on Sunday. If he's able to return by then or, or maybe even early the following week, give Lucas Reichel an opportunity to play with Athens CU. Those two guys gelled really well last year. And maybe that's something that can get him going is that chemistry that they had with one another when Reichel was playing on the wing and Andreas Athens CU, oddly enough, was playing at center. Those are the only three things I think the Blackhawks, those are the only three options I think the Blackhawks have with Lucas Reichel. Scratching him, I don't think is going to do, is going to do him any good. And keeping him on the fourth line, I think is just a waste of time at this point in time. And, I get what Luke Richardson has been trying to do, and I appreciate him having these comments about Lucas Reichel and saying how much they care about him and how they will support him. That's something a good head coach should do. But at the same point in time, X's and O's wise, he's not putting Lucas Reichel in a place to succeed, and I think that has to change. So to me, I would put Lucas Reichel back up with Connor Bedard and <clears throat> Philip Kurashev. That's been a little bit of a revolving door up there recently. Beauvillier got off to a nice start to his tenure alongside those two, but kind of went cold. Ryan Donato, I don't think is the answer up there as well. Why not Lucas Reichel? This offense, I think the Blackhawks have scored one goal in four of their last eight games now. It's a struggle. So you might as well try something, um, but it feels like it's either that or Lucas Reichel is going to be heading back to Rockford sometime soon. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show, and be sure to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now, wherever you may be listening to your podcast, and to go and subscribe to the Locked On Blackhawks YouTube channel, and that way you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available 
each and every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Go and give me a follow at Jack Bushman2 on X, or you can go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, it's going to do it for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.